It was a fantastic weekend for the Mercedes team. The best possible outcome with a 1-2. And Lewis now leading the Drivers' Championship. Congratulations, Shove. Uh, let's talk about qualifying to start with because it was a complete washout and we haven't had much wet running this year. So how did you approach it? Well, the, I mean, in terms of setup, what you do when you, when you get a wet, wet session is you have some reference points from the dry car. And we'd done enough work on Friday um, to have a decent balance with the dry car. We knew where that should be. And then it's, it's questions like, do you want to carry a bit more wing for the wet qualifying? That will always help um, on the very sort of slippy track you get in those conditions, but it may compromise you for the race. Um, there's questions of just getting the balance right. The car's often a lot more oversteery in the wet, so you need to build more stability into it. And people may have also been looking at the stiffness of the car, because often a softer car is a bit more forgiving in those conditions. Um, so setup-wise, you've got that translation. But the other problem with a wet session is they're just much less predictable. Um, in a normal dry session, we know that if we go out and we do a clean lap, it's going to easily progress us from Q1 into Q2. But when you get those wet sessions, if the track improves, you might get beaten by a car that's much further down the order. So the, there's a lot more pressure, and it's one where your, your thought process is more stay on track, keep putting in quick lap times, make sure you're up there, um, the drivers are not necessarily pushing flat out from the word go because of the risk of making mistakes, but they're just always doing enough and you're circulating, just tracking conditions, tracking those lap times. The other thing that, that simplified this session significantly was that Red Bull had those penalties. So going into it, we could look at it and say, well, Red Bull, I mean, they are always very quick in the wet. Their car seems to work well in, in those sorts of conditions. But for once, we didn't need to really worry about them. We were going to let them do their own own thing and for both championships our focus in that session was Ferrari. Well let's move on to the race now because Sunday morning came you were then free to choose which tyres you started on for the race. How did you decide uh, what to start on? Well there's, I mean there's two main factors here. The, uh, we obviously had the super soft tyre and the soft tyre. The medium wouldn't have really been a consideration for, for anyone this weekend. In terms of start tyre up at the front the super soft, you've got better warm up, and that's really important going off the line. It's a very long run down to turn one, and then you've got this tricky, slow chicane where you need to have good braking into it. It's often very busy. There's three cars often trying to fit onto the same, the same piece of track. So that's one of the, the big benefits to going for the super soft tyre. But the other thing that you always get is that if there is a safety car during the race, say it's lap 15, lap 20, you've then got the more durable tyre to go to and you can be confident that you can go as far as anyone else who's doing that. So up at the front, you could see it was pretty predictable. Everyone's uh, got the same thought process as, as us starting on the super soft. Cars further back, like um, Ricardo, they were taking the, the soft tyre and, and the reason for that is, is that you're more likely to be held up so if you're going to be held up, you were biased towards the, the tyre that, if anything, is a bit slower. But it's also the tyre with a lot of range. And he would have been trying to pick off people where he can. If he couldn't, he'll sit behind and preserve the tyres. And then as everyone peels in for those stops, he can then actually show the pace that he's got and make up some ground in that mid, mid portion of the race. Um, the other thing he's thinking is offset as far as possible and get on fresh rubber at the end. And then you can, you can attack anyone who you can catch up with. Well, let's look at the first pit stops. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen going fairly early on, lap 15. Uh, did that surprise you? Uh, it did a bit, actually. We were, what we thought would happen here, um, because you had this, this race between um, Ocon, Stroll, with Kimi at the back of it, um, Kimi was, was trying to overtake. He had more pace than those cars. But when you're stuck in a train of cars and, and the one in front of you has DRS, it's, it's actually very, very difficult to get by because he's being towed along by the car in front of him. So Kimi was a bit stuck in that position, but further down, down the order, they had um, a Toro Rosso, and what we thought would happen was as these cars cleared that Toro Rosso that would have been traffic after their stop, um, they would then make the, make the pit into free air. So we were expecting actually Ocon being the first one to get that free air would trigger that sequence. So he would stop and then that would drive people to either react or they could try an overcut. If they didn't get the overcut to work and they didn't build the gap, they would have just stayed out and offset. That's the next thing you can do is just try and get on fresher tyres. Um, what happened here was that Kimi pulled the trigger early, um, thinking he could probably undercut, came in. Uh, Esteban, who was at the front of the queue, reacted and managed to get out in front. And then Stroll left it longer. He was pushing hard, had a bit more pace than that Force India, 
Um, and if Williams had done their best pit stop, he would have come out either alongside, maybe just ahead. So it was quite a, quite a key point of the race for him. But as it happens, they had, they had a poor stop that time. It's quite unusual for Williams. Um, but they did have a poor stop and that dropped him to the back of it. So we've seen Kimi pitting early, but uh, Bottas and Lewis being able to run their tyres much longer than the predicted pit window. Uh, did that come easily this weekend then? Uh, pretty easily. I mean, they, they are resilient tyres and um, you, know, you, you saw people taking the soft tyre around 40 laps of the race, even, even more than that. So there's this actually quite a wide window that you can choose to make this single stop. And we knew that that would be a wide window. We thought um, because we, well, we didn't expect to be as quick as we were, so we thought we might be drawn into making an earlier stop, reacting to what might be happening behind us. Um, but because the drivers could manage the tyres and they could look after them, you can keep them cool, they last longer, they've got more rubber on them, and that allowed us to push. Um, but what we were waiting for was really just clear track behind. Um, and you've got to look a bit further down the order. You could see Sebastian, there were two factors that he would have been concerned with. One was Perez was there and ideally you don't want to drop behind Perez. Uh, Force India is quite a fast car, they're difficult to overtake and it would have meant that he couldn't have shown that new tyre pace. But they would have also had Ricardo on their radar who was on this soft tyre going super long and they would have known that if they changed too early they would have been on older rubber at the end and perhaps vulnerable to the, to the threat from the Red Bull. Um, for us further up we were actually just waiting for the clear track that Sebastian was going to, going to give us when he stopped. And there wasn't really any reason to come in. It was, it was, it was fine if we'd started to degrade the tyres, we would have boxed earlier. But if we could have avoided dropping uh, Lewis onto Sebastian, we, we were intending to do that. So it wasn't really a high pressure situation. You're just watching the race unfold lap by lap and trying to decide the right thing to do. There were a lot of drivers starting, as you would say, out of position on Sunday's grid. Yeah. Uh, and yet, bottom left-hand corner, zero safety cars. Uh, not what you sort of expect on a circuit like Monza, even though we don't tend to have a safety car, but with that many drivers out of position, surely it's, it was it a, a threat. It is a strange one. I mean, there's, there's opportunities to overtake cleanly at Monza. You know, often when you get, um, you get the crashes, it's because it's difficult to overtake. A driver has to make a pass to make his strategy work and he'll take risks. Whereas Monza, if you're a quicker car, you can do quite a clean pass. Often you saw people even getting out and back onto the racing line before they, before they had to brake. So that's one of the factors. But it, it is unusual, as you say, the very high speeds, the big braking zones. It's quite a narrow circuit as well. But we've not had a, sa a safety car there since 2011. So it is quite an unusual um, stat. I think we had seen enough of it during the qualifying session. Yeah. Shav, thank you so much for talking us through the Italian Grand Prix. Uh, what a result for the team. Uh, the next stop is Singapore.